As the 1970s progressed, friction was clearly building between the ideals of the civil rights movement and the reality of race relations in America. This was especially obvious when it came to education. The Supreme Court had outlawed school segregation back in 1954. But two decades later, many children, black and white, still attended segregated schools because they still lived in segregated neighborhoods. And the reality was that most white neighborhoods were wealthier, which meant better funded classrooms. The main thrust behind African-American interests desegregating white schools was a desire for access to quality education. But it wasn't just a desire to have, you know, a black body sitting next to a white body. They understood that dollars and cents followed white children into white schools. Boston was one of many cities where white schools and black schools were not only separate, they were deeply unequal. We have these predominantly black schools that are just not on par with white schools. They don't have the resources, financial or otherwise. Schools are crowded, teachers are leaving, um, there are lots of children in, in a room. So it's just not the same experience that white students across the city of Boston are having. For years, activists had been pushing to make education more equal for all of Boston's children. The quality of education, the excellence in courses, the excellence in teachers, the excellence in what the kid has gained at the end of 12 years is missing. A quality education means integration education. Finally, in 1974, a federal judge ordered a compulsory busing program to send black students to predominantly white schools and vice versa. It set off a firestorm in the working class neighborhood of South Boston. 